Redmi has a pretty confusing number of different models in its Note 11 series. Not only does it have models with the same name but different specs in different regions, hello viewers from India, but each phone is different and perhaps not justifiably so. The Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G sits at the top of the range, very closely matched to the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G. And note that the 5G part is important because there are also some 4G models in the family with different hardware. I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint and this is our review of the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. Wow, that's a mouthful. If you do like this video, please do subscribe, hit that thumbs up and tap that notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. Now the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus looks a lot like the Redmi Note 11 Pro. You'd be hard pressed to tell them apart, but as the weights and measures reveal, they're in different frames. The Pro models in this family are characterized by the flattened sides and the back. Now squared edges aren't so great on large handsets and we much prefer softer curves that don't cut into the stretching, gripping fingers. As it is, this phone is more comfortable to use when in the soft plastic case that comes in the box. We actually like the frosted finish to the rear of the phone though, it saves this device from nasty fingerprint smudges and light shimmers across it nicely. The camera sits in an island in the top left. That positions the main camera top and assembles the supporting lenses and flash beneath that. One circle appears to be just a blank panel designed for symmetry's sake. The fingerprint sensor lives in the power button on the right hand side of the phone and has been completely reliable during our testing. And there's stereo speakers along with a subtle sound by JBL etching on the frame. And as branding goes, it's not actually that offensive. The speakers are pretty good too, certainly not lacking any volume and has reasonable bass. So a valuable addition for those watching videos or gaming out loud. This phone also retains its 3.5mm headphone socket, a bonus for those who want to use an existing set of wired headphones. There's also IP53 rating, enough for basic splash protection. Overall, there's nothing really to complain about with the design, but also nothing really to get all that excited about either. Now there's something of a feeling of sameness about Redmi's recent Pro displays. The 6.67 inch display is Full HD+, AMOLED and offers up to 120Hz refresh rates. It's not adaptive as you might find on high-end devices and we also found it was off by default. So hunt out that setting and turn it on if you want smoother visuals. The reason it's not turned on is to preserve battery life and with a smaller battery in the Note 11 Pro Plus compared to the Note 11 Pro, that's something you might want to consider but more on that later. There's a punch hole in the center of the display and it's perfectly bright and vibrant, leaving nothing to really complain about. Sometimes the auto brightness gets a little confused and we've found ourselves walking along in bright conditions with the display seemingly thinking that it's dark outside, almost like it's dimmed because you weren't using it. Overall, we're not surprised Redmi stuck with this screen because there's really nothing to complain about here. It's a decent panel. It is covered with a factory fitted scratch protector and ironically, the softer plastic surface of this protector picks up marks really easily, so it soon looks messy. You might just want to remove it. Now onto performance and battery, and there's a couple of things in this phone that set it apart from the regular Note 11 Pro. And that includes the core hardware and the battery. There's a move from Snapdragon 695 in the Pro over to MediaTek's Dimensity 920 in the Pro Plus, and that creates a bit of a dilemma for buyers whether they want to go with a stronger brand, Snapdragon, or potentially higher performing Dimensity 920. Now as far as mid-range devices go, and we're still in the more affordable end of the market here, there's plenty of performance in everyday tasks, pretty much indistinguishable from flagship hardware, at least when it comes to basic things like email or working or social media. Most of the performance issues, however, seem to come from the software, which is MIUI or MIUI, which appears here as version 12.5 on Android 11. So it's out of date compared to the rest of the market, but also seems to change a lot for the sake of changing it with little real gain. And unpicking those changes to get back to a more practical arrangement is definitely worth doing, like moving to gesture navigation and disabling the lock screen carousel and reverting to the quick settings and notifications pane back to a combined entity rather than having them separate. We found Bluetooth to be a little rocky, Taking a couple of attempts to connect to headphones, we tried a couple of different brands and just seemed to make it more of a meal than it really should be. Otherwise, however, connectivity, including 5G, seemed solid enough, with no problems when making calls and no problems streaming or accessing data-rich sources. We also found the handoff from Wi-Fi to cellular to be slick and quick, without the stumbling that some phones go through when you walk out of the house. When it comes to gaming performance, it's not a graphical powerhouse, but it's good enough. 
Attempting to switch to 120 FPS mode on Call of Duty Mobile drops you to low graphics, which isn't really worth the trade-off, but the game is perfectly playable at 60 frames per second, so it's not a huge problem. And then you have the battery, or rather the charging. One of the big additions on the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus is 120 watts charging, which is blisteringly fast. To accommodate this, there's a drop to a 4,500 mAh cell, which is smaller than the 5,000 that's on the Note 11 Pro with its 67 watt charging. Do you need a charger that goes that fast? Well, the good news is that a 120 watt charger comes in the box, and we dare say you could use it for all your other devices too. But as it is, supporting fast charging is a great thing because the phone will charge in a flash and you don't really need to worry about when you'll charge your phone because you just plug it in and it's up to the higher percentages in about 15 minutes. The downside, and there is a downside, is that this phone's endurance isn't great. It seems happy to burn through the power that it's got and we've often found ourselves at the end of the day getting under 15% battery. Lots of things contribute to this, especially if you're gonna go game on it, as the demands on the processor are then high. But then does less than stellar battery life matter? Not when you can plug it in for 15 minutes and go back to normal, not really. Moving on to the camera loadout and performance, and on the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus, Redmi drops the depth sensor from the Redmi Note 11 Pro, not that you'll notice the difference. Otherwise, the camera loadout is effectively the same. That means it leads with a 108 megapixel sensor, although that top resolution is only unlocked if you delve into the Pro mode. Otherwise, it uses nine in one pixel binning, resulting in a 12 megapixel photo which is pretty standard practice on such devices. The high resolution sensor is really a spec sheet play, giving Redmi something to shout about rather than it offering remarkably better results than a 50 or even 12 megapixel sensor. However, it's quite a decent performer, quick enough to grab images while it doesn't have quite the pop of the pixel or the luscious results of the latest Samsung phones, both of which seem to leverage post capture processing more effectively. The results are good though, but you'll notice that it's not so adept with HDR scenes or handling bright colours, which often overexpose and lose details. There's a decent night mode that will give you much better results than the standard photo shots in low light. The ultra wide camera is great as this is a useful lens, even if it isn't the best quality, but there's no telephoto zoom here. However, you can tap to go to two times digital or pinch out to 10 times, but the further you go, the more quality you will lose. There's also the macro sensor, but it's barely worth a mention as it's so low quality. And this is where the camera really doesn't compete with the flagship models. The 16 megapixel front camera is reasonable once you tame the face softening beauty features. It offers pretty good edge detection for portraits with nicely captured blurred backgrounds. Now in the end, the Note 11 Pro Plus doesn't really offer anything significantly improved on the Note 11 Pro, neither in price nor performance. For a little more money, you get that fast charger and admittedly that charging speed is impressive. But across the rest of the device, apart from a minor processor boost, there's little else here to mark these phones apart. It almost feels a bit like Redmi just wanted to get 120 watts charging into a phone really badly, and so they went ahead rather than wait another year to introduce it. Still, that's where we are. We can't really say this phone makes a lot of sense next to the Note 11 Pro, especially with them being so similar. And both have the same software issues and the out-of-date Android, which is perhaps the biggest shortcoming of this device. As an all-rounder though, the Note 11 Pro Plus is perfectly competent, offering good performance and value for money, with fast charging being the bonus. But that's really the only flicker of excitement, the rest of this phone just plays it straight. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media, you can get hold of me there if you want to. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.